The following video clip is from TrainSignal's SQL Server 2008 database development course, featuring over 10 hours of SQL Server 2008 development training, plus complete 7433 exam coverage. Enjoy the clip. So we talked about our error functions. Let's go and use them. Let's jump over to SQL Server and actually build a little bit more elaborate air handler that actually uses our functions. So let's pick up with where we left off. I uh, still have my old stuff up here, but we don't need that. We're going to go File, Open, File, and Air Handler is what we're going to work with this time. So I'll click Open, and it brings up some code that we're going to play around with. Starting at the top, simply says use Veronica's without that I, I would need to change the drop down with that I don't need to worry about it it's built right into the code and then I have a create procedure statement for creating the sales dot insert customer stored procedure what's this all about I've talked a little bit about protecting your data you are the keeper of the data as a database developer database administrator the roles are slightly different but ultimately you are the person that's closest to the data understands the underlying structure of the data and is the keeper of the data so you know what's valid data you know what's not valid data and by doing things such as disabling all direct access to all tables and instead creating your custom interfaces to the tables you can do a better job of policing what goes into your data, policing what comes out of your data, policing who sees your data. So I could go back and disallow, say, all insert statements. Don't give any, and then you won't, disallow, you won't necessarily disallow insert statements, but not give permission to directly insert anything into a table, but instead give permission to use the stored procedures you create and then put any policing functionality you want into the stored procedures, such as making sure the zip codes are valid or making sure maybe last names I was on a filling out some online SQL server group I was joining it and didn't want to give my full name yes I've done that and I just put in a, a one letter last name and it said nope that's not valid and go, oh somebody put some error checking in there right you can do the same kind of thing so check for last names that maybe have more than one letter make sure phone numbers have the right number of digits and only digits no letters etc you know right on down the line states Make sure it's a two-character state that is valid, right? And make, maybe even go so far as to say, just give me a zip code. And you have your own lookup table that looks up the state. It's up to you to help keep your data clean. These are some of the things you're going to want to do. And you can do them by policing all of that here. So I'm just doing a direct insert of the data for now. But I could add a whole bunch of validation routines right above this and validate all that information before I allowed it to be inserted, OK? But all I'm doing for now is inserting it into the Veronica's database under the sales schema. There's a customer table, and these columns are going to get inserted with this data. I'm going to insert this data into those columns. And all of that is in a try block. There's my end try, there's my begin try. So if anything goes wrong, any rules or anything that pops up, instead of me losing control and SQL Server just kind of coughing up an error message at me, I maintain control. My application drops down to my begin catch block and does whatever processing I have here. And I have something commented out that we're going to get back to. We'll talk about that second. But first, let's just create this stored procedure with my begin in. And I'll just highlight only that portion. Hit execute. Commands completed successfully. I've got my new stored procedure here. Right click over here. Refresh. I can see it. So there's my sales.insert customer stored procedure so that looks good so now I can go about calling it passing it what I know is well maybe you don't know but most likely invalid value for customer number customer number one we're long past that business has been around for a while it's doing good so if I try and insert a second customer number one it says uh, excuse me get this up so you can see it violation of primary key constraint PK customer cannot insert a duplicate key in the object sales.customers. It gives me the actual error number associated with that. There's a severity value, an error state value, and it even gives me the name of the procedure where it occurred, right? Pretty cool. I love that as a programmer. That makes it a lot easier to find out what's going on and get down to the bottom of things, all right? Now let's make a little change. Here, let's change that from a one to a, I'm gonna go with 6,000. I've already used the 50,000s quite a bit. I know there's some in the data. We'll just skip over that. 
and we're going to insert this person a second time with the most generic name I have ever seen but they've got a very unique customer number so they should be good to go press F5 and looks like we've got a new customer in a database Mr. Last Name select star from sales dot customers where customer number is in I'm gonna use this over and over again so I'll do it this way when I get more in this list now currently the list only has one thing on it but the list will grow highlight that press F5 and yes indeed we did insert Mr. Last Name into our database which we will take out later okay but he's in there for now now the next thing I want to point out is not SQL Server specific at all it's not T-SQL specific at all this is a generic general programming principle programming technique that I've used I've seen used that is very helpful and SQL Server has the same upside and downside when it comes to try catch you need to have a begin try an end try and then a following begin and catch block in every store procedure in every whatever that you want to capture errors if you don't have one there it automatically passes it up the call chain to whoever called that routine but if you want to handle the error locally you have to have a begin and an end try and a begin and an end catch locally there is one little way to get around or maybe make it somewhat generic and you do want to do that as much as possible you don't want to take if you ever find yourself copying and pasting code to multiple routines you need to stop and find another way to fix the problem because here's what's going to happen you're going to figure out oh I want to change that routine and make it a little better or there's a bug in it that creeps up and they've got to go find every place you copy and pasted that code into your application that's a bad situation to get into so if you find yourself doing the same basic steps over and over again in your error handling routines you can take that code I'm copying it out of there and I'm gonna move it up to here and I'm gonna create a procedure called sales that error proc pretty simple as this stuff here and to give it a go and that's creating my new routine now in this case here I'm not creating it I'm altering it otherwise it'll give me an error saying you can't create it it's already there and down below I actually had a little change of, of heart here so I need to take that comment out but I have to also add this in front why? Well, I decided up above when I created it to put it into my schema. That was really an oversight the first time around. I didn't intentionally make the decision to put it in the schema, but I should consistently, if I'm using schemas, use that because of all the security and benefits I get as far as managing users. But this will create a new procedure called sales.airproc. Just go ahead and create that. Next, let's just do it all in one fell swoop. Use Veronica's create it, alter this guy to call it, execute looks like that worked just fine right click refresh and there's my two store procedures now so now I should be able to run it and get the same results so let's try and reinsert the same person again what happens explodes on me right but I get a controlled explosion right controlled blast because it calls my routine so once again anything I have in my begin catch block that's what gets executed, whether it be something to directly deal with the error or passes the error on to somebody else. So now I can have multiple routines all reference the same piece of code. And as I build it out, make it more elaborate and more involved and more effective, I don't have to go back and copy and paste it to all the subroutines that call it. All I need to do is simply call it from here and no more need to change this guy. All right. And let's just try one more thing. Go ahead and put that in. And this time it should work just fine. And it does. I inserted it. And if you go back and add this guy to the list, we should see our two new, very generic customers have indeed been added to our data. Right? 